Hello everybody, my name is Provis, and welcome back to more RimWorld with our Wandering Nomads campaign. I spent a couple of days in between video just getting a basic base set up. Still working on some of the finer details, but at least we're getting things up and running, making sure we can make some meals and continue with some research. And the reason we're settling down, at least for a little while, probably this entire video, is we need a winter somewhere, because my uh, animals simply do not have enough hay to continue journeying up north where everything's frozen over. So we're waiting for a better season, waiting until some proper springtime weather. So yeah, we're just going to sit here for a bit. Now this is still going to provide a very good opportunity to make some improvements. For example, we know that people are having some serious problems with their aging. If we go to cannon fodder, for example, we can see horrific aging is a minus 10 mood penalty. Right now he's doing alright, but that mood is going to be plummeting as time goes on, so we are going to be needing to deal with that, try to get the biosculpting figured out, and while we're at it, maybe heal Telsior's bad back. I think that's actually one thing I'm realizing really sucks about transhumanists. They seem so powerful, but that biosculpting need, oof. Oof, it is, it is an unpleasant one, not to mention they're going to have some sort of neurological stimulation requirements and stuff, too. One fun fact, by the way, about playing as a might-makes-right type of uh, society... <laughs> If you're wondering why JP and Lex are injured, it's because in between videos they both snapped and went on insulting sprees. And basically people didn't take any crap and just punched them out, so now they're in the hospital. <laughs> That's pretty funny. In the meantime though, yeah, I mean, we're just gonna go ahead and settle down. You've seen all this before, I'll go ahead and jump forward. Oh, we finally finished researching biosculpting pods. Okay, and Nomax going on a tantrum. Well, fantastic. Uh, biosculpting pods. I haven't worked with these in a very, very long time. There they are. Takes eight construction, some steel, and some components. Not that bad. It looks like it takes 60 days to retune to a new person, which kind of sucks. And I'm pretty sure it takes a few days of people sitting in a biosculpting pod for this thing to do its job, which, you know, admittedly is a bit of a while. Um, but probably still worth. Let's go ahead and build at least one of those out. We can start reversing some of the aging. I'll definitely try to help Telsior, see if I can make him a bit better. And this should hopefully undo a lot of the negative mood penalties we've been getting as of late. Some characters fluctuate wildly, like Nomak. Cannon apparently is particularly versatile. He does cause some problems. Nomak's just punching all the doors. Very mature, Nomak! Eh, it's fine. As long as he gets his catharsis, it's actually all worth it. This could be a heck of a lot worse. And of course, we're gonna get the plague right as we finish up the uh, pod. Well, that's fine. Everyone needs to go and rest and get taken care of. This should be deal uh, fine. We can handle it. Just a bit irritating. Nutrition. Apparently, we have to toss meals in here. That's fun. Prepare a medic cycle. Take 6.7 days? Oh my gosh. And 9 days to reverse a single year of aging? Oh my god. This is... This is a little bit expensive, I'm not gonna lie. Holy crud. And of course, that means we don't have somebody for a good long while. One random infectious disease. It doesn't say that this will solve any issues with my um, bad back, and that may not be patched into the game quite yet. Could reverse a year of aging, I suppose. Oh, gosh. Uh, I mean, sure. Once it's sent, uh, filled with five nutrition, send a colonist and right-click. Okay, so I can decide who gets to go in there. Wow. All right. Um, yeah, that's the thing we're going to do. I, I can't say I like this mechanic exactly. This... this um, Seems powerful, but really penalizing. I, I, ugh, ugh, okay, well, I think we'll send Cannon, since Cannon is consistently an issue once he is done with some of his plague treatments, which I think he'll be all right. Telsior, you need to go and rest, which it looks like you're already doing. Fire Sax is already resting. Good, and Tigera, my primary doctor, also got the plague. Well, that sort of figures, doesn't it? Uh, we have an animal who's crashing. Hello, it's a duck. Kill the duck. Okay, I read some of the finer prints on these Biosculptor pods and how they work. So you can actually speed the process up in part by having a very clean environment. Sterile tiles would be ideal, but I don't have those research. So instead I've placed down some steel tiles in a separate room. And supposedly, per the wiki, uh, the Biosculptor pod does in fact heal the bad back. So we're gonna have Telsior go into this Biosculptor pod and start this process. His disease, his plague should not make any progress while he's in there. And now he's gonna go through a healing cycle. And we're gonna see what happens with him. I mean, he should come out of this without the bad back. God, I really hope it was Telsior who had the bad back, right? It was Telsior, I'm pretty sure, right? 
Oh god, uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Either way, um, yeah, so let's build a second one. We might as well get this process rolling with a bunch of people. It's gonna be a while before we leave here anyway, so if there was any time to start doing some age reversal and bio sculpting, I guess this is it. It's just, woof, dude, this is an expensive investment that only transhumanists really have to deal with. I'm also starting to work on the neural supercharger, which is another thing that I am pretty sure people are going to require uh, in a transhumanist group. We've already seen some move penalties there, so I can go ahead and start researching those, but that's another thing that might be a very expensive investment just to get some mood buffs that wouldn't otherwise be a problem. Ouch, dude. Yeah, actually, you can see right down here, this biosculpting pod, cleanliness factor. Right now, because I have these steel tiles, that's giving me an ever so slight buff up to 105%, and this drops anytime any dirt or anything gets tracked in here, so... Yeah, uh, okay, sterile tiles might make this slightly more bearable. And the fun fact is, by the way, I'm pretty sure that transhumanists already have the benefit of this being cut, like, in half or something as far as, uh, healing time, and normally it would take even longer. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Oop, and fun fact, we are being raided. Okay, tribes people, um, these guys look like they might actually be related to the folks that we kind of slaughtered, so I guess I don't really blame them for being a bit peeved. <laughs> um, but we're gonna have to kill them all! Uh, what's the easiest way to defend this, do we think? Just kind of go and try to deal with one group and then go and deal with another? Maybe, honestly, it might be fastest to just go ahead and intercept one group rather than wait for them to come to me and attack from two different directions, as that's, that's obviously going to be a little bit tough to deal with. All right, everyone get in position. I'm hoping that because they're tribes people, we can lay down some fire so fast that it's not going to matter much. So we're already taking a few shots over here. Headshot right there on Hummingbird. Beautifully done. Yeah, I mean, they got they got bows and arrows and stuff, but we can handle this, probably. I really wish Dragon was still here. We could abort the process and try to get him to come out here with his minigun, but I think we can handle it. Well, that's one group running away, and I think I only took a couple of bruises out of that, so here comes the next group, which appears to be much larger. Good thing is, um, I didn't trigger the Ancient Danger, so they're not going to draw anything out. And actually, they're stupid enough to run into some of the traps I was setting up. Well, that actually is just hilarious. Alright, well, hopefully my Muffalo and Alpacas will be fine, because here they come! And they're running away, because it's that easy. I think we actually shot a couple of our Muffalo in the process, but overall, not, not too bad. All right, well, anyone you can slaughter on the way out, that's great. We're actually really bad about knocking people out in order to try and recruit them, unfortunately. Um because we're just that freaking lethal these days. If I really wanted to take some of them out and let some live, I think I'd have to change up my weapon uh, style, but to be honest, I'm okay with just killing them. I mean, really, do we need a larger group at this point? Nah, probably not. Well, hello. Somebody just crashed. Someone who's decent at melee and crafting, but a tough wimp? Wait, how are those two compatible? Mm, nah, I think we just let you die. I don't really care about the melee skill that much. Go ahead and strip Lucy down. Um, so Telsior is about to come out of the pod. Here's the thing. I'm pretty sure that I screwed something up, and I'm about to find out that this is horrible. So here's the thing, right? Biosculptor pods. Uh, I did a bit more reading on the wiki. There are a few different modes for them. I think we used Medic Mode, which is going to mean that Telsior is, yep, cured of the plague. Which I could have cured way faster had we never put Telsior into the pod. It did not cure the bad back, and the reason for that is, apparently there's another cycle, and I could have seen this, but I just overlooked it, bioregeneration cycle, which can cure things like um, a spine. You can see that this is actually already set for Telsior, and therefore it tells me outright what can be healed. One of them, a scratch scar, which I actually can't control which of these conditions will be healed, and the other would be the bad back. So it does work, except we have to do more research, Bioregeneration will take 4,000 research to do, and also, it takes something on the order of 26 days in order to make that work. That's not going to be a viable solution, I'm afraid. Telsior, if we can find a bionic spine or something, great. Otherwise, I'm tempted to enslave you because you're not going to be that useful to me right now. It's going to be a while. Um, we're also not going to wait the 60 days for this darn uh, pod to reset itself. We're going to go ahead and deconstruct and rebuild it. I have heard from some people that you can uninstall it and then reinstall it and it resets. I'm pretty sure that's a lie. You have to uh, actually deconstruct or just wait the full 60 days. So we'll go ahead and build out another one. 
But yeah, I screwed that up. The whole reason we got these is not going to uh, solve Telsior's problem. On the other hand, we can at least try to do some of the uh, age reversal, which we did have to do at some point anyway, so there's that. You know what? Telsior, use this healer mech serum. It's only got three durability left. Any more time outside, one more trip, you know, packing up a caravan and it's probably going to decay. So just go ahead and use it. Did it cure anything for you? Yeah, we just cured the bad back. <laughs> oh my god. All right, solve that problem. Yay! Um, we thought we could do it for free, and it turns out we cannot. So, yay! Um, we were going to lose that serum anyway. We learned something today. Um, healer mech serums, much faster and better solutions than Biosculptor pods. My god. Just not worth it. But, hey, Telsior, good news. You don't even need a bionic spine anymore. You're set. And in fact, if you want to be really fun, we could give you an Architect leg. I'm actually debating who I want to give it to. We should give somebody the Biotech leg. Because people do want to have some modifications to their um, to their bodies in order to fulfill transhumanist goals. Probably makes more sense to give it to one of our melee characters so they can move around fast. I think on Fire Sacks, we are going to go to your health and we are going to install the Architect leg. We've had it for a long time. We've never used it. I've never needed to use it, and I'm not going to give it to my slave. So let's go ahead and install the Architect leg. We'll use Glitter World Meds for this. And you, my friend, are going to have a fantastic time. I would actually be tempted to place... Uh, you know what? We could do this. Hang on. Before we install the Biosculptor pod, let's actually go ahead and temporarily turn this into a medical area. Because that will mean that we uh, have some sterile environments and we're even more likely to succeed. Okay, are we going to succeed? Yes! Now we have an Architect Leg, which is going to increase your move speed by a lot. Pretty darn good, in my opinion, for a uh, melee character. You want them to get into the fight nice and quick, so... Finally use that thing up. We have a couple other uh, implants we could make use of. Let's say a Bionic Eye, or even a Bionic Stomach. That was something we had talked about doing. Not that it's, you know, a fantastic thing for me, but we could. We also have a Bionic Arm. I don't even remember getting that. So, somebody would probably benefit from having one of those, too. I mean, honestly, anybody who doesn't already have some sort of modifier would probably benefit. Hartman, for example, give them the Bionic Eye. This is a ranged character and would enjoy some extra accuracy, right? You know, Crafter would love a Bionic Arm. And I don't care who gets the Bionic Stomach. Whoever seems to be the most susceptible to uh, getting uh, food and uh, poisoning or something, I don't care. It all works. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and do some of that, too. Uh, once Fire Sax is up and running, though, I think we are going to finally crack open this ancient danger. We need to find out what the heck is going on inside there. And let's not forget to take advantage of Habsburg's speaking abilities once in a while. A little bit of extra mood is always a nice thing. Hey, look. Some free muffalo just wandered in. Because <laughs> I needed more of those. They actually have some stuff on them. Not a lot, but I got a little bit. Uh, all right, sure. Yeah, no, this is something else that we'll be able to take advantage of, I guess. Just go ahead and sell some goods later and enjoy some free chocolate. Also, more muffalo. You know what? Some more genetic diversity to add to the herd. It's probably a good thing. Hey, Dragon, welcome back to the world of the living. Um, so, how are your needs as far as... Yeah, looks like that actually did completely solve the uh, desire to have some age reversal. Even though it only reversed one year from your life, that's apparently enough to make you happy. Okay. So yeah, this, this definitely works uh, as intended. That's good. So if we're finding ourselves with some truly atrocious mood penalties, it just means somebody has to have downtime for several days, and then, uh, yeah, we can solve that problem, at least for a while. And now that we have our full team, let's go ahead and deal with this ancient danger. This is a pretty good-looking squad, I'm not gonna lie. And then we got our melee characters ready to go around the corner. Let's see what's gonna happen here with Habsburg, and it looks like it is one Scyther. It's honestly probably not even worth the effort of trying to, uh, to kill with a huge squad. It's probably gonna die on these traps if it's dumb enough. Let's just see what sort of happens here. Uh, yep, yeah, there. Wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, well, that was good. Um, Psychic Cornucopia, Sooth Pulsar, I have run out of those. Some more Glitter World meds, always nice. Habsburg, uh, do me a favor. Um, let's go ahead and deconstruct this so that people can easily get in here, and then we want to open up the Crypto Sleep caskets and see what's going to happen. Uh, since it was so easy to deal with this, and I clearly grossly overprepared, I'm wondering if that means that the, uh, people inside the Crypto Seed Caskets are gonna be extra dangerous? Or maybe not. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in all the melee characters just to be safe, and if I need to retreat all of them, I certainly can. But we're gonna open one of these suckers up, and, whoop, okay, we have a lot of angry people. 
Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and retreat. Let's see if we can get out of here anyway. Habsburg appears to have been punched a little bit. Can you please get out of here? Just run for a minute. Uh, you'll be fine. You got really good armor. Ooh, God. Okay. Watch out for the crossfire, though. <laughs> All right. So you guys are going to come after... Ah, Natasha, no! Run, Natasha! Run! What are you guys doing? Get out of there! You're not supposed to be there at all. Well, crap. Now they may just go around and kill my slaves. Fine! Fair enough! Change of plans! Run in there and beat the snot out of them! Okay, we've managed to deal with most of them. Looks like we unfortunately did kill them rather than knock them down. And this person decided to go and beat down a baby alpaca. Boy, don't you feel brave. I got more characters on the way, and you're dead. Alright, enjoy that. Um, we can rescue that alpaca if I really care. So, cool. Well, we dealt with that. Um, a shame that none of you survived, which means we don't get to hold on to any of your goods. Um, gosh, I really wish there was a way to clean off the whole taint thing. I know there are mods that can do that, but I, I feel like that ought to be a default part of the game, you know? The ability to just remove the taint so we can actually take advantage of armor. It would mean that we would become way too powerful way too quickly, I acknowledge. Right? You fight off some really big foes, and all of a sudden you get their best possible armor. But, come the heck on, dude. Like... We shouldn't care. And it looks like my reward for dealing with all this is we got a tech print for neural computation. That's actually probably not a bad thing to have. But at the same time, I also don't really think that I care that much about it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say that this was kind of a big bust. Um, not a lot gained out of this. Not even a lot of good weapons. Some people had some good armor. And I guess we'll go ahead and strip a couple of them and take the tainted stuff. Because we may very well decide... We're willing to accept the mood penalty in exchange for some better armor on occasion. Heck, in the very final stage of the game, we're ready to set up the friendly AI. Maybe I go ahead and just deck out my slaves and pray they don't rebel against me. And we'll go ahead and give them some armor or something. We don't care what their opinion is. Maybe? Ah, I don't know. Disappointing. Very disappointing. Oh, and we just finished the neural supercharger research as well. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a second. Anything else here that I think would be really good for me to get? Maybe machining could be useful? Um, I don't really know, but I mean, we could start making our own guns or flak armor or something. Alternatively, I guess there is the sterile material. We can go ahead and do that and just make things like the age reversal a little bit faster. Terrain rehabilitation. Soil? Uh, no, I don't really care about that. That's good if you have underground bases. Yeah, there's not a, there's not a whole lot here that I think is going to be really worth uh, working on. If you want to have some better attire and stuff, I suppose, but meh. Yeah, forget it. Uh, we'll go for the sterile tiles, and that means that we can heal people just that much faster. And a dromedary died from the flu. Well, that sucks. So how do these neural superchargers work? It looks like it is a miscellaneous building. It takes up a lot of power, makes people learn and think faster, but does consume more food, wears off after a day. Uh, hmm, okay. Well, maybe it would be worth building a couple of these and just sort of see what happens. I mean, how much power are we talking about? Not too sure. I did toss Cannon into the uh, Biosculptor, by the way, since I assume our veteran crew are the ones who are the most horrified by their aging. But yeah, let's see if we can go ahead and get some of these built. Uh, we did have a Psychic Drone fire off for the women, by the way. Uh, a high level one, so like a minus 30 mood penalty for all female characters, which is obviously going to suck for a lot of reasons, but... There's not a whole lot I can do about it at the moment. I am thinking we need to go ahead and do a caravan run at some point soon. Specifically, uh, the only neighbors that I can think of are some tribes people up over here, but we can head up over there and just sort of see what happens. Maybe we can offload some of our goods or something. I don't care. We got a lot of bows and stuff. You guys like that kind of crap, right? Okay, so these are both built. Looks like they have to charge up, and it takes about a full day to do that. Fun. Fair enough. Okay. Um, as far as power is concerned, it looks like we are still gaining energy rather than losing it. So even though these do take up a lot of power, we can handle it. That's good. Uh, I assume if it charges one of these up every day, then that means every day two of these characters will satisfy their need for super, uh, supercharging. How long that uh, happiness is going to last? Don't know. We're going to have to find out. Well, I've arrived at the tribe. They don't have a whole lot. I'm going to offload some of my animals, though, since we are clearly consuming too much food in our pen, and offload some drugs, some other random stuff, and a whole bunch of weapons I don't need taking up my space. Not going to gain a lot out of this, though. I mean, a psychic shock lance is nice. Animal shock pulser and stuff can be fun, but... 
Yeah, not not a lot of gain. Um, we we didn't pick a location that has any good trading partners nearby. We could try going all the way back to you know, let's say the Shattered Empire amongst the mountains, but I can only imagine how long that's going to take. If we visit them, yeah, five point four days. We have a, such a long time to wait before this season is over, though. My God, I mean, I've been playing for almost two hours now, and it's only the fourteenth of December. So, yeah, this is going to take a very, very, very long time. Ugh. Well, we're getting there. I mean, I take that back. 15 days each? No, wait. We're actually really close to spring. Oh, good. Never mind. Okay, I am completely wrong. All my complaints are invalid. We're almost ready to pack up and get the heck out of here. What the heck? I've never actually seen this event before. A psychic bloom just started. A strong psychic pulse emanated by a long-forgotten entity. So, endless auroras, colorful flowers everywhere, and all of my fields are going to start growing faster? I mean, that sounds flippin' fantastic. Holy crud. What did I do to earn that? Amazing. Alright, we've officially reached the point where all my animals are starting to starve completely. We lasted a good long while with this pen, but yeah, the winter has not been kind. So we're moving what hay grass I do have out here, and it looks like the animals are going nuts for it. Just devouring everything they can. That's fine, because we only have to survive a little bit longer. By the way, I did replace all the tiles down here with sterile tiles, which got me an extra 10% or so in the cleanliness factor, so that shaves off at least a few hours of both Habsburg and Cannon Fodder being inside of the Age Reversal pods. Which is nice, uh, because it does mean that once we have hit the uh, 15th of December, or moving on into April May, We'll be able to have these guys ready to go within mm, about a day or so of changing seasons. So we won't be here that much longer. And in the meantime, if I want to go ahead and use one of those psychic cornucopias, that would be one way to get some extra food set up and ready to go. Or some extra hay grass. I don't know. I mean, what else am I going to do with those things? Answer, save it for an emergency like I always do. That's a fine strategy. It just means that sometimes you waste your opportunities. Oh, you got to be kidding. Okay, we just had a cold snap hit. Um... One thing I can try to do real quick, since I have a lot of crops that uh, have been growing and I would hate to lose them, is to just go ahead and activate this cornucopia. Boom! Alright, so now we've got all these. The question is, now how fast can we harvest all of this? I need this hay grass. I need these crops. And I don't care about the tall grass, this should actually sustain my animals for a little bit. But before the temperature really drops a ton, we need to get this taken care of. I actually would like to just go ahead and leave this area so that the cold snap doesn't affect me too much. Um, but I am worried that moving all of my animals and all my people into a caravan packing position for a while could result in me... You know, freezing to death, uh, which would not be ideal. So, I don't know. Um, let's go ahead and start gradually packing some stuff up. But it may be time for us to start getting out of here before this gets too crazy. The real trick is just go on a harvest spree. Oh, look at the slaves fight each other! Fight! 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 No, seriously, you guys are actually, like, beating the snot out of each other. Look at them go. Yeah, don't mind Habsburg. It's just like, eh, yeah, you guys do your thing. Whatever, social fight's taken care of. Okay, well, that looks painful, but, um, I, I, I am amused. Hey, wait a second, am I crazy? Mr. Jusum has changed out his armor. He's wearing marine armor. I am pretty sure that marine armor is something that we took from one of the corpses. It's no longer tainted? Oh, question. Um, the mending mod that I have here, does this automatically remove the taint from everything? It actually might, in which case, hey, I'm really glad that we got that armor. Fun fact, by the way, I have now researched gun turrets, which means when we are prepared to set up, we will be able to take advantage of some turrets, get a proper defensive base. The only time we're going to ever have to entrench is potentially defending that friendly AI. All right, let's go ahead and deconstruct everything. It's time to get the heck out of here. Okay, and now begins the grand packing. Uh, this always takes so long. Hopefully, with all these people working together, it'll go semi-quick. Oh, this is hilarious. I sent off a large chunk of the group off on a caravan run. They grabbed most of my stuff. Then I just got a quest about um, allowing an EMI field to get launched here, which shuts down all electrical devices for six days, which, uh, no problem, of course. So, this time around, he did actually send me my payment immediately, and we just gained things like a mega screen TV, a harp of masterwork quality, and some silver. <laughs> awesome! 
This actually has been the most annoying caravan packing yet. So, something dumb that I've recently discovered, and yes, I've had to have four separate caravans to make this all work. Something I've recently discovered is, uh, um, if your people snap after they've finished packing the caravan and the animals are just about to leave the pen, but haven't left the pen, and one of your people has a snap, then all the animals get uh, unleashed and wander around. Everyone else is confused on what to do, and even when they break out, no one knows to gather all the animals back together, which means all the people go to the edge of the map, but none of the caravan animals do, which means you can't go anywhere. So yeah, I've had to reload a few times. This took me about 45 minutes just to get all the packing jobs done. But hey, we got a mega screen TV out of it. Okay, so this has been a long and arduous process for me, um, but we are very close to our goal. There is one more friend that we can pass by over here, the Swampness on the Meadow, which is just the most ridiculous name I have ever heard in my life, that we can pass by and trade with, try to offload some last minute goods, maybe a few animals I no longer need, and then we are going to arrive by the landed ship. The question then becomes, do we immediately hop on to said landed ship, or do we hang out for a little bit longer? That's a great question, and I don't know the answer, but... For now, I think this is a good place to end this video. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Next video might very well be the finale. I'm not sure yet. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.